Now that we are done with all the basic criteria to decide about the convergence or divergence of a numerical series, and before we turn to power series, we're going to review a little bit all these criteria. So in general, the type of questions you should expect, uh, you should expect a long list of this type of question on a test on series. Uh, you want to know if a given series is convergent, and possibly if it's absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent, but uh, usually the main problem is knowing whether the series is convergent or not. And the first thing you should look at is the limit of the sequence of general term. This is not the same as uh, uh, the sum of the series, but this is where you should start, because in particular if this limit is not zero, then the nth term test tells us that the series is divergent and then you don't have to look any further. Additionally, if you find that the limit is zero, uh, in the process you may get some idea on what to do next because uh, it might give you some sense of how it is going to zero. In other words, is it going to zero like a p-series, like a geometric series, uh, something to compare it with. We're going to discuss comparison uh, a little bit more in a second, but at this stage, uh, checking on the limit might give you an idea of um, the behavior by comparing with series with a known behavior. Specifically with p-series or geometric series, which are the simplest one um, in terms of deciding if they're convergent or not. Uh, so a p-series is just something um, like the sum of a constant over n to the p, where p is constant, and n is the index of uh, summation. And then such a series converges exactly if the exponent p is strictly greater than 1. In other words, if it's less than or equal to 1, then the series is divergent. And a geometric series is something where um, you have a constant and then powers of uh, a fixed number r, that is called the common ratio for the geometric series, and this, is, um, this kind of series are convergent exactly when the common ratio is strictly between negative 1 and 1, or in other words, its absolute value is less than 1. And in the case where a geometric series uh, converges, we've established a formula for the sum. This is one of the few cases where we can get the exact sum easily. Um, namely, if r is in absolute value less than 1, then the sum of the geometric series of a geometric series of common ratio r is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. Then, if it's not a p-series or a geometric series, it might be similar to a p-series or a geometric series. And in that case, uh, you should try direct or limit comparison with the corresponding p-series or geometric series. Uh, similar means that you expect the behavior to be the same. Um, and namely, this comparison test, direct or limit comparison, let me remind you what they are for direct comparison. If we have, uh, at least for n sufficiently large, so for all but finitely many n's, uh, the two sequences a n and b n that are uh, sequences on, of non-negative terms or eventually non-negative terms, and we can compare them. In other words, uh, a n is always less than or equal to b n, at least for n sufficiently large. Then we can conclude that if the series with larger terms or eventually larger terms converges, then the series with um, eventually smaller terms converges as well. And on the other hand, if the series with the eventually smaller terms diverges, then the series with the eventually larger terms diverges as well. This is the idea in direct comparison. Limit comparison, we're looking at um, two sequences of non-negative terms, or eventually non-negative terms, where the limit of the ratio is a positive constant. Then the two series behave the same. So the idea here is you know the series of an for which um, you want to decide whether it's convergent or not. You have to find bn such that the limit of the ratio is a non-zero constant and such that you can easily decide whether the series of bn is convergent or not. 
And then since both have to behave the same, you can conclude for the series of AN. So typically BN is going to be a P-series or a geometric series because these are the series for which it is easy to decide if they're convergent or not. So for instance, if we want to give a, a idea of uh, how to do direct or limit comparison, let's start with direct comparison. Let's take a, a quick look at an example. Let's say we are uh, asking about the convergence of the series of general term 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n minus 1 plus 2. Then the basic observation here is that when you divide by 3 to the n minus 1 plus 2, you're dividing by something greater than 3 to the n plus 1, so you get something smaller. So the general term of your series is non-zero, is a uh, non-negative term, and it is bounded above by 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n minus 1, which is ge the general term of a geometric series of common ratio 2 thirds. And this geometric series converges because the common ratio is in absolute value less than 1, and therefore by direct comparison we can conclude that the series is convergent. For limit comparison, let's take as an example this uh, complicated looking series where the general term is the root of n cubed plus 3 n plus 3 divided by the cubic root of 2 n to the 6 plus n to the 4 plus 1. It looks complicated, but the idea in limit comparison is that all that matters is the asymptotic behavior, and the asymptotic behavior is determined by the um, leading terms. So in this case, we have n cube under a root, so n to the 3 half, and then at the bottom we have n to the 6 over a cubic root, so n square. So for a n, we take the general term of our series. For b n, we take just the leading term. So we have root of n cube at the top, cubic root of n to the 6 at the bottom, so it gives us n to the 3 half divided by n to the 6 third. And so that's n to the 3 half divided by n square. So we get n to the 4 half minus 3 half, 1 half at the bottom. So our bn should be 1 over n to the 1 half. So this is how you pick the bn uh, to do your limit comparison. Then uh, you look at the limit of an over bn. And in that case, it's going to be 1 over cubic root of 2 but um, this is something that you should show. Um, anyhow, in this case, this is what we get, and this is a non-zero constant, and therefore the limit comparison test applies. That means series of an and series of bn behave the same, but we know that a series of bn is divergent because it is a p-series for p less than 1, less than or equal to 1, and therefore the other series is divergent as well. Now keep in mind that uh, direct or limit comparison are for series with uh, positive terms, or let's say at least eventually non-negative, but typically um, uh, series with non-negative non terms. Uh, it might be that um, comparison or limit comparison applies to the series of the absolute values of an, and if you can conclude that the uh, series of absolute value of a n is convergent, then that means the series is absolutely convergent, in particular convergent. So sometimes that might be a way to conclude about the convergence and to apply this criteria that only apply to series with positive terms, even when you don't really have positive terms. Now if you have uh, an alternating series, so that's a series uh, that takes um, where the general term takes values that are alternatively positive and negative, then we have seen uh, a test that is specific to this kind of series, the so-called alternating series test, that tells you that if you have a sequence of uh, non-negative numbers, that so I want them to be non-negative, and um, this says that this is decreasing or eventually decreasing, and with limit zero. So the criteria is that if that sequence is decreasing with um, uh, limit zero, then the corresponding alternating series, negative one to the n bn, is convergent. Now this negative one to the n is not really important. It could be negative one to the n minus one, negative one to the n plus one, any variant of that sort, uh, anything that makes it an alternating series. 
if you have a series with general term that is defined in terms of products, quotient, powers, factorials, then the ratio test is the standard tool for these type of things. And what it says here is that uh, if you look at the quotient of two consecutive terms in absolute value, absolute value of an plus 1 over an, and you take the limit as n goes to infinity, if the limit exists and is strictly less than 1, then your series is absolutely convergent, and in particular convergent. If that limit is a finite number strictly larger than 1 or is infinity, then the series is divergent. But if this limit is exactly 1, there's nothing you can conclude from the ratio test. And in particular, when you're applying the ratio test, uh, you have to calculate this ratio A, A indexed by n plus 1 divided by A n and simplify this. And uh, typical things that you have to keep in mind is that if you have um, a quotient of powers of the same quantity, then a to the x divided by a to the y is a to the x minus y. So you have this kind of simplification. And when you have factorials, keep in mind what it means. And factorial is just a product of the first n consecutive positive integers. And so something like n factorial divided by n plus 2 factorial would be, while well, you have the product 1 through n, divided by the product 1 through n plus 2, and that's really the product 1 through n that you multiply by n plus 1 and n plus 2. So the product 1 through n cancels out, and what remains is uh, n plus 1 and n plus 2 at the bottom. This type of simplification with uh, factorials is something you should keep in mind. Now, we also have seen the root test that applies typically to... Um, series where the general term is the nth power of uh, another expression. And the root test is pretty similar in terms of its structure to the um, ratio test. Specifically, um, we are looking, instead of looking at the absolute value of the quotient of two consecutive terms, we look at the nth root of the absolute value of an and look at the limit as n goes to infinity. And again, if that limit is a finite number less than 1, strictly less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent. If this is a finite number strictly greater than 1, or if this limit, or if this quantity goes to infinity, then the series is divergent. And if um, the limit does not exist or is exactly 1, then there is nothing we can conclude from the root test and you have to use another tool. And finally, uh, if you cannot use any one of these criteria, you might want to consider the integral test um, if you can write your series as the sum of the terms of the form f of n, where f is a revalued function uh, that is eventually non-negative, continuous, and decreasing. Under this assumption, we can use the integral test that tells us that under these assumptions uh, the series is convergent if and only if the improper integral of the function um, is convergent. So that was for a quick recap of all these criteria and a little bit of uh, thinking about what you should do first and what you should consider in what order. Now um, you have a long list of exercises in the homework for this module so it is time for you to turn to that.